Tu Audio Producciones. Profesionales en audio, iluminación y video. Welcome to our little presentation video of the D80 amplifier and its software R1, V2 and Array Calc. What we want to do in this video is not going into technical detail of this device, but more about why we have chosen this design of the hard and software as it is. It is of course not me who is going to explain you all about that, since we have here Mark Weber from Product Management and Matthias Christner from Loudspeaker Development to explain you the functionality of this new device. Mike, from a product manager's point of view and the initiator of this fine piece of electronics, why is it a four-channel amplifier? Well, one uh, main reason was the rack size. In nowadays touring business, truck space and weight is one key to cost efficiency. We either had the choice to put two channels into one rack unit or four channels into two rack units. And looking at the complete package here, it is clear that the two rack unit solution provides more ease of use due to more space for a proper user interface on the front, which appears on the D80 as a touchscreen, and more room for various connectors on the back. The next point is, it is more efficient to set four channels from one user interface than from multiple user interfaces. And the common infrastructure, Ethernet, CAN bus, and the power supply is just required once. So, so what you're telling me is the packaging and the user interface got much more efficient. W what else is about the bus of the new amplifier? Well, first of all, uh, it's a Class D amplifier, which means it has a higher energy efficiency and maximum power density. It's the maximum power density that we can put into such an amplifier. Uh -huh, power density and else? Have else? Well, oh, we also <laughs> put a DSP in there, which is significantly big, bigger than anything that we okay. had before. So, so bigger DSP, uh, I mean, you know, wh what do we do with all the DSP power? Well, in the past we've seen that uh, some of our users used uh, additional loudspeaker management systems. In combination with the DMB system, because they feel that the four band EQ and the maximum delay time, which are currently available, are not enough. For example, if they are visiting engineers and they expect more. We now increase this to two banks of 16 equalizers, equalizer bands, including an asymmetrical EQ and 10 seconds of delay per channel. And that, Ralph, should really be enough. Thank you, Mark. Very interesting. Uh, Matthias, now to you as um, the head of loudspeaker development. I mean, uh, we just heard that the D8 is much more powerful than the D12. I mean, what do we do with all that power? Does it mean that all our loudspeakers are getting now massively louder? Well, in fact, it's much more correct to look at output voltage rather than continuous output power, since music is typically not a sine wave signal. Of course, some of the existing systems will, will gain a little bit in peak output. Uh, but for new and future products, it's the increased output voltage that allows the meaningful design of speakers with higher efficient motors. It also gives more flexibility to shape the directivity. Together with further enhanced limiter control, this leads to higher system efficiency again. Great stuff though, but, but you know, that's, that's what, what I've heard, we have another secret weapon built into that amplifier? In fact, there is another asset built in. It's the practical advantage of the PFC controlled power supply. PFC stands for power factor correction that makes the output capability widely independent from voltage variations coming from, in example, heavily loaded main supplies. This feature gives a remarkably increased audio quality and is an explicit advantage in remote areas with substandard main supplies. We made quite a few interesting experiences on this and had to learn that it had been widely underestimated. PFC, I mean, you know, power factor correction, I mean, can you give us a real world example of the, what that thing is, how does it work? Well, yes, <clears throat> there's a very good analogon from real life. Um, maybe you remember your last visit to a pub. Think of a pint of beer. The capacity of the glass represents the maximum you can get out of the plug. Usually the glass is filled with both foam and liquid. But the liquid is what it's all about. The foam is just for decoration and does not contribute to the effect at all. And that's the same with the electrical power. Less foam means full conversion of the available energy. 
from that point of view, how should a proper beer look like? The left one is a pint without PFC and the right one is a pint with PFC. The right one looks much better, don't you think? <laughs> certainly, Matthias, <laughs> certainly. Thanks, Matthias, for this interesting uh, excursion into beer gardening and loudspeaker system design. Uh, coming back to you, Mark, uh, some more words probably about the new uh, control software that we are using with the D80. Uh, I've heard that we just changed to a dramatically new user interface. Yes, and the most important thing on that is that the user interface from small to large system looks similar due to its scalability. And you will feel at home immediately once you have some experience with DMB systems. Even as a visiting engineer on a festival, you will immediately understand the system. And it now also runs on Mac operating systems. Great stuff as well. And on the planning side, one always struggled to put the design system into reality. I mean, on the one hand side, you have the configuration of the user interface uh, that had to be made. On the other hand, you had the physical setup with racks and wiring. What happened here? Well, <clears throat> Ericalc and the new R1 software, they are interacting more and more to form a user-friendly system planning and controlling platform. Ericalc is the comprehensive planning tool for system design with all current DNB loudspeaker systems. It offers the possibility to export a directly usable project file for the DNB remote control environment. It automatically generates functional groups with associated system-specific controls. The R1 project file contains all amplifier settings with the graphical user interface so that the fine-tuning of the system on-site starts now. And additionally, the project file contains a snapshot with all channel settings like loudspeaker configuration switches, levels and delay values, which were simulated in Ericalc to provide the user with a useful starting point on-site. Once everything simulated in ArrayCalc is precisely rebuilt in reality with the standardized racks and wiring solutions, the system is ready to play, requiring only minor tuning efforts, if at all. So, so what, what I've heard, what, what is the experience now with this integrated workflow so far? Do we have any? Well, of course, this feature proved to be a massive time saver for system engineers. It's another example of DNB's famous QTP technology. Uh, QTP? of course, quicker to pop. From all of what I've heard, this amplifier and software platform provides enough technological headroom for the next decade. So, which one do you want? <laughs>